I don't know what I'm doing. Welcome to the Talk is She podcast. I guess I do have a bevy. Hi, everyone. Um, Oh, it's episode 70, by the way. 70 episodes, that's crazy. Not gonna get into that because I really wanna get to the point of this episode, which is why. It's, it's so cringy. You probably already saw the title, but why I'm a threat to society. And let me just make two things clear. I wanna make two very big disclaimers. One, I don't think I really am. Like, if you're in a marginalized group, you kind of already are a threat to society, and that's obviously very clear through like the oppression that you suffer and all that so i'm not here trying to be like "Ooh, i'm in the matrix like andrew tate <laughs> i don't want to be like because like he probably thinks that he's a threat to society because he speaks the truth and he's got a bugatti and all that stuff but i'm not like being really serious i i guess when i say that i mean like why i'm so different or why like i don't know why i don't really fit the status quo that well and i'll like that's the second disclaimer listen if you are exactly the opposite of me with everything that i am about to say in this uh episode i like there's nothing wrong with that because i'm going to talk about being a single childless woman in about to be my 30s well i'm about to like i'm in my late 20s if you're the opposite of that if you're in your late 20s and you're a married mom with kids and like you like drinking and like all that stuff like if you're exactly the opposite of what i'm about to talk about there's nothing wrong with that i don't think i'm better than you even though it's gonna sound like that i think literally i don't know i i think i thought about the title of this episode first i was just like oh it's gonna come off super standoffish right like why i'm a threat why i'm like the one why i'm neo why are there so many matrix references i'm really energized i think the energy in this episode is really great but i think the things i'm about to talk about i'm not marginalized for i'm not like oh like i'm a whole other class of person no but they are things that sure differentiate me that that doesn't really bother me they do kind of put me in a little bit of a box like people do there's a stigma around a lot of the things that I'm about to describe here. And that's why I was thinking about like how if you're not aportando to certain economies, like the ones that I'm about to mention, uh, pers- like for example, uh, you know, the child economy, like you're not aportando a como que things that you have to get for your child or the alcohol economy, um, you're, ki- you're not a threat, but you're kind of not necessary in society. And that's, that's a really chill thought that's not a conspiracy theory that's not something that i've thought like really seriously i'm like oh my god i'm gonna make like so many tiktoks about no it is something that i wanted to discuss though going into the new year can we still say that it's over the half a month of january (laughs) but still um yeah i just wanted to talk about those things a little bit so i'm gonna i'm gonna describe myself first hi i'm kiara um I'm a single, unmarried, childless woman in my late late 20s, like I was saying before. I don't drink. I am okay with never getting married, me personally, or being in a serious relationship. I love my job. Let me, like, I really want to get into that one. Um, And a really big one, and an economy I didn't mention before. I am really okay with my body. Like, I'm really okay with it i don't even want to say i love it because that's a process that i'm getting to but i'm really okay with it uh to the point that i'm not making any crazy changes to it via exercise well i am exercising but that's like without the goal of weight loss and yeah let me get into god again it's so cringy it's so cringy why did i think of this title but now i feel like i have to go through with it (laughs) why i'm a threat to society hit the um tiktok music that's like ding, 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 you know that music um let's see i want to get through this one first because it might be a little controversial it's something that i haven't talked to a lot of people about just like my closest friends i feel like i've brought this topic here a lot though on the podcast uh and i think you all know my stance on this but i I also bring it up because, you know, it's a topic that's been going on around with my friends, with my closest friends a lot. 
And it obviously makes you think about yourself. You know, I never want kids. And I say this because, you know, like my like some of my closest friends have had kids recently and plan to, you know, have a big family and stuff like that at some point. I don't. And it's been a big point for me recently, at least for like the last two years, because every time I say that, and I think we all know, right? Like a lot of us know, like if if you're a single woman that doesn't ever want kids, like I feel you and we should generally have a support group (laughs) because especially if you're older, like if you're younger, you're not going to get it. But I'm getting to a point where a lot of, you know, uh, how do you call those contemporaries, people that are your age, uh, are doing that, right? They're having families and having kids, specifically just having kids, sons, family even. And when I get asked about myself or like when I say like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm never having kids. I don't want kids at all. Que se yo. For all the reasons, right? I have like literally think of all the reasons. I don't want kids because of any of those. Certainly I have like very personal reasons as to why I don't want to. Um, but when people say it to me like when I say like oh yeah I never want kids and they come to me with all these ridiculous responses like you'll change your mind yeah I probably will so what how is that bad um I mean I probably won't but who knows right never say never but when people the way people respond to that is like what never like they get so worked up about it somehow and I'm over here like why Like, why does that matter to you personally? And also, why is it so strange? I even feel like, and I've talked about this with my best friend, like, eh, the world and the state that it's in is not even, not. it's not a reason to not have kids. Like, you should have them anyway. I'm a big supporter of that. But also, just like, I feel like it's not just the having kids part. Because I don't think I would be a good mom and like, or a good parent at all or like, I also feel like whenever people ask me that, I should just straight up give them a reason to think that I would be a bad mom, straight up. And it's specifically the mom part, because it's not even the parent or the father part. Like, people don't really care about when men say it. But, like, when women say it, it's almost like, and we've had this discussion before, right, of, like, oh, like, people think it's so maternal, like, then I say, like, you're a woman, so that's what you must want. No, I don't. End of discussion. But not just that, it's, I don't know. It's just, I feel like people find it so weird. And you can say that now, como que esta generación, a lot of people don't want kids because of responsibility, because of the money, because of all those reasons. But I also feel like there's just something that bothers other people about a woman not wanting it because it's like we're supposed to be domestic and we're supposed to be maternal and caring for like listen i am a selfish ass bitch which is why it's so funny when um people say oh you don't want kids you're selfish yeah i am i like my free time i like my money for myself i don't want to take care of anything else that's really not in me so what now and there's this other point also where it's like listen i'm gonna just say it I mean, I don't want to say it, say it, because de- demonetization. But I feel, and this is like a topic for another day, I feel like people aren't as progressive towards the act of becoming unpregnant. And I think you know what I'm talking about without me having to say it for the algorithm. I feel like people still have a big stigma around it. Even if you're pro-choice, I feel like there's this big stigma around doing that that people haven't overcome that leads to you thinking that that's murder in a way um so i feel like we still have a long way to get to where like a lot of women who don't want kids and also let me just say that like if you're the type of person that's like oh i did this i did that this year but one thing i didn't do is get pregnant like you're a loser you're a loser um like that's not a prize that's not like something so big i don't want kids and i like i don't care about that because those people might even get pregnant and might even go through with you know like being a mother or being a parent so like i feel like there's still this big stigma around just birth control just decision making towards 
family planning and stuff that I feel like we're really not over. So there's a long way to go with that. And that's why I don't want to say that's why I'm a threat. That's so stupid. But yeah, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to like, that's something that I wanted to talk about in this episode. And speaking of forming a family and stuff, because forming a family doesn't have to be kids necessarily. Like you can get married and that can be your family. Listen, another topic is that I, I aspire to be in a relationship at some point, right? Like that would be nice. That would be really nice, right? But as I've grown older, I've become very, like, I'm a very solitary person. And I'm very okay with myself. I really, rara la vez is when I'm like, oh, I feel lonely. Like, it'd be nice to see this person or see that person. And, like, I see my friends a healthy amount, too. You know, it's not like I'm out here pushing anyone away or, like, you know, just actively requiring self-alone time or whatever. But I'm a per like to make things short, right? I'm a person who is very okay with just being by myself and living alone. And also just living this life that I live alone. I wake up, I work, I work on content and stuff, and I go to sleep. And that's really my life, and I like it. So I feel like. It's kind of like the baby thing a little bit. Like, oh, you don't ever want to get married? Like, to me, sure, I would love to. But that has, to, like, for me personally, that has to happen really organically. Like, I'm a slow burner, baby. I don't casual date. <laughs> I like to take things slow. I really have to like the person. It's a whole thing. It's very personal. But I also don't feel like my life is incomplete if I don't marry someone. A lot of people do, and if you do, it's fine. Like, that's okay, because, like, yes, it has been ingrained for us to want that, but also, like, if you want that for your own merits, kind of like having children, then that's okay, too. Um, but I'm very okay with being unmarried for the rest of my life. I'm very okay with being single for the rest of my life. And I think people find that weird still. Or like, you know, I'm just so okay with myself that I feel like I recommend that you kind of look into yourself and look at how okay and great it can be to be by yourself. So you can kind of understand me for yourself, you know, do it for yourself, but also to understand me because I'm the most important person. <laughs> um, I guess, you know what, I'll follow up with this one that I will make very short because it's explicit. Um, I don't really need a man for that. And I think you know what I'm talking about. The big S-E-X. I, I don't like to talk about that kind of stuff on my podcast. I wish I could. I feel like at some point it would be nice to talk about actuality and pleasure and stuff like that like somewhere else I don't know maybe I'll just make a podcast without the video or something and discuss topics like that but I don't like talking about it on this podcast specifically I just want to say that I don't need a man for that it's been a few years let me just say that god I can't believe how open I'm being on this podcast um but I as I it's you know it's been it's been a few years and generally as more time passes, the more okay I am without, I'm not saying, like, I think I need that a little more than marriage, <laughs> but generally as time passes by, I think I kind of had to accept that I am my best lover. I think I'm becoming very okay with that, and I think that also threatens people, because it's kind of like, you know, I don't need to be meeting people, again, it's okay if you do, but I don't need to be meeting people to have a good chaka chaka life i hate that i talked about that but uh other than that i also put my pleasure over everything why am i a threat because i put my pleasure over everything and that's not i was thinking this morning about how like that point is not really like you know there's like a man drowning and you're like oh i'm gonna put my pleasure over everything and i'm i'm not gonna save him I'm, i i got some other stuff to do putting my pleasure over everything, no, putting your pleasure over everything for me is like, I'm a big seeker of pleasure, 
I'm a big seeker of leisure. I'm a big seeker of like what is going to make me happy as the most, even if it's superficial, whether that be food, brunch, uh, going to the beach, uh, just buying something that makes me happy, doing small things that make me happy. I'm a big seeker of that. I would love to talk about that more on this podcast, but I do that in my everyday life. And that can also be saying no. Just say no. Like your friends want to go out. You don't want to just say no. You're putting your pleasure over that. I put my pleasure over. Like, I don't want a family and kids and all that stuff. And the like one of the big reasons is because I want to put my pleasure over that. I want to put being happy over that. And I think, you know, there's this like false sense of morality That's kind of like, oh, like you have to be selfless. You have to be whatever. And I talked about this a few episodes ago where like that can cause resentment. You know, if you put other people first. But to me, putting pleasure before everything is like. I think it has led me to have living a good life. So I think a lot of people are kind of bothered by that. And that leads me into this next point, which is that I love my job. And listen, I just want to make another disclaimer and say that I know that a lot of people can't really choose their jobs or be in a job that they like because capitalism, you know, I'm not going to blame you because like you want to, I mean, not that you want to, but because you work at like somewhere that you don't like a low paying job, a minimum wage, you know, like we talked about last episode, but I was lucky enough to be working in a company that really respects me as like a worker and that I thrive in and that really fits me I'm a social media manager like I love it I love my job and I was thinking about how like that can like I feel like you can't even be that much around like older Puerto Rican people because they grew up hating their jobs which sucks can you imagine like a lot of people nowadays do realistically um I can't imagine being in a job that I hate Hi, Editing Kiara here, and I just want to say that I have worked a job that I hated. I don't know why I acted. Like, I literally think I suppressed it that much. But listen, I have worked a job that I hated. It paid more. I also want to say that. So I literally stopped working at what I used to work during the pandemic because this opportunity came up. But I really just wanted to say that people kind of question when you leave a good paying job for a job that maybe makes you happy, but doesn't pay as well. So yeah. That's the point I wanted to make. So I feel like when people like see that I love my job, it's like, oh, then that's not a good job. Because you're right. Like I don't get paid a lot, but I like for me, it's worth my peace of mind. For me, it's worth the time. For me, it's worth like just being a good worker, you know? So I love my job and I think people find that suspicious because <laughs> they're like, You know, your job doesn't even pay that much. Like, why are you so happy? And it's because I was just lucky enough to land a job that really, like I said, respects me, respects my time, is something that I can, like, I get to do this podcast because I have this job. So I think it's something that people kind of find weird and with good reason, you know, capitalism sucks. But yeah, uh, I don't drink. That's another reason why I'm a kind of a threat. And I don't, I hate that I'm saying that I'm a threat. But listen, alcoholism is very prevalent in Puerto Rico. Te lo saben. Um, And, you know, people sometimes, people have questioned me. And I actually kind of don't mind it because it's so common that people drink. You know, so like when I say, oh, yeah, no, I don't drink. I do get Like, it bothers me way less than the kids thing. I'll be honest. More people are like, why? What? Like, you like living your life sober? Like, what's that? You know, like, I get it. Because life is really hard. And, like, going through it, you know, raw doggy. <laughs> raw doggy life is kind of crazy. But also, like... You, you know, no estoy aportando a the economy of alcohol, which is, like... I guess the reason I'm a threat, but it's also really strange. It's strange to people that I don't drink. It's strange to people. And like, I guess, sure, it is weird. And that's the reason I brought it up. But another thing I kind of wanted to talk about that is that I do feel left out, not in a bad way, because my friends still invite me, you know, like we go out. It's fun regardless. But we like, 
nightclubs and stuff like that are things for people that drink for sure like that's something i figured the last time i went out i was like okay yeah i'm too sober and chill for this i kind of just want to go home um it was fun to just be with my friends and stuff but like and i don't miss it i don't miss drinking at all i'll be honest and like at some point sure i'll drink again because i would love to have some wine with pasta some beer at the beach like that's awesome i want to be a pretty moderate drinker i don't want to be a social drinker because that can easily lead to binge drinking i never want to do that again but i want to be able to just have some mimosas at brunch and stuff like that you know simple things yeah the point is that i'm good without drinking and i think people find that very weird <sighs> the last one as i mentioned at the beginning of the episode is uh i'm a woman who's really okay with her body and like two years ago i think i dropped an episode that really encapsulated i mean it probably still holds up pretty well i don't know if i disagree with things with other things i mentioned in that episode go watch it it's like two years ago it's like august 2021 probably Nada, el punto es que I am very okay with my body. And I've learned a lot. I have come to terms with a lot. I used to, you know, I've discussed my body image issues before, which are obviously like the gut and not having a lot of butt and not having a small waist and things like that. I'm, I'm not conventional. I, am I more conventional than others? Yes, of course. But I'm not as conventional as some of my friends i'm not as i'm not i <laughs> most of us aren't conventional at all compared to like people in magazines and beauty and like models and things like that right which is fine i've become very okay and i think society has come a, a long way from fat phobia not as much not as much but definitely like now that the point is that I've become very good with my body and I really want to spread that to my friends and people that I know. I want them to feel okay with their body because it's amazing and it gives me so much confidence to feel okay with my body. Help like I don't want to get into body neutrality because I don't think that works. But um being okay with it is like the start. And then you kind of feel more confident in yourself and you have a realistic image of yourself within a group of friends or with people or stuff like that and you start to dress better and you start to dress for yourself and people can see that you feel good with yourself and then you and you know like shout out to Adriana Filomeno because she said this she said that I was making her feel more comfortable and just like posting her body and to not edit herself and stuff like that and that really touched me because it's like she's a big ass creator You know, so it's like you would think that she's confident enough and like she, you know, but I th I feel like when people, she told me that you can s go watch Fuega right now and see that she was like, wow, you really don't care. And I, it sounds like a backhanded compliment because she talks like that, but yeah, I don't, I don't care that you can see how I look at myself because like I post myself as I am and I'm. I've become to I've come to love my body a lot. And I think that threatens people because I don't want to change it. I used to want to have a big butt. I used to want to lose weight. I used to want to change it. And like I want to say something that might ruffle a few feathers. You know how people say I did it for myself. You know like I got the surgery for myself. I lost the weight for myself wait no tanto because that can become a medical issue at some point but doing that kind of stuff for yourself i don't know if i believe it because i wrote this down i'm a, i'm a quote myself i'm a quote pasquera no you know as in like i did it for myself no you did it so you can be at peace with the opinion of other people You did it because people were telling you you had no tits, so you got your tits done. You did it because people were telling you that you had a big nose or making you feel bad about your big nose, so you got a rhinoplasty. I think when you don't make those changes to your body, there is a lot of power in that. And I think people can see it. So I want you to, like, if you take anything from this episode or from that segment is to really assess like what's wrong with my body and realize that there's nothing wrong with it.
you're fine just as you are. There are other things that you need to work on. You need to work on being scared of other people's opinions, um, how pe other people see you, your own confidence, your own biases. Because you can be like, oh, I'm so fat. And it's because you like have internalized fat phobia or just are fat phobic in general. So I want you to really assess those things about you and then realize that you are hot as you are. Just like Cheryl Lee Ralph said this past weekend, you know, if you look in them, you got to look in your mirror and you got to love what you see. And she, wow, okay, what a moment. I love her so much. Oh my God. I love the Abbott Elementary cast. <laughs> God, what got into me? But yeah, I want to finalize the episode because I know this was a little bit of a longer one. I'm kind of proud of it. God, I hope I, I feel like I was very happy talking and I feel like when I, when I watch it back, I'm going to say, what the heck, like what got into me? But I feel like I was pretty eloquent in any, everything that I said. So, um, yeah, the point is that I'm hot, I'm free, and there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> now that, thank you guys so much. Uh, blessings to all of you. I feel like I should end that. You know, I should end ep every episode with blessings to all of you and good vibes. Ooh, that sounds like a good send off right? Like, let's vote on that. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this episode or listening. I hope you guys have had a good welcoming back to, you know, uh, school, work, whatever, going back home, all that stuff. There will be a new Fuega out this next upcoming month, so está dependiente de eso. And uh, yeah, I'll see you still in las redes. Blessings and good vibes. See you guys. Eh, it's working already. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Bye, guys.